the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Have sinned. The Bible said all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So why would you, being a sinner, I don't care, you said that I'm a, I'm a child of God, but if you are sinning, if you are sinning, that's what my buddy just said and say, you just can't keep on sinning. Well, the fact is, that's why the grace and the mercy of God is there for that purpose. So I, I'm not putting you and condemning you because you sinned yesterday or you sinned today. I'm trying to say the fact that if you sit there knowing and practicing sin toward your, and I'm talking about bad behavior toward your fellow man, so there's a big difference between your sin against your own body, right? There's a big difference between you sinning against, uh, you know, you drinking yourself, you, 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 you just, wow, you know, you're just doing things that, that if you keep doing it, it leads to your death, right? But the point I'm talking about is when you sit there knowing that you got different issues, all of us, are, we do. A lot of us got a lot of eternal hidden sins, unforgiveness, right? Hate, right? Those things that, well, hate is, is manifest, right? But let's talk about the other ones, you know, from, from lusting and so forth like that, or jealousy, envying. You know, those things that people can't necessarily see. And, and yet you, you, you know that you have those areas. And then you still attack somebody else because they have what you call more visible sin. You know, even the demonizing, when you sit there and try to demonize a whole group of people just because they're, they're, they're white or just because they're black or just because they're, they speak Hispanic or wh whatever, and you sit there and demonize a whole group of people to justify bad behavior. That is what we want to talk about. But first, we're going to get into is let's get our Lord's Prayer in because it's a no good fit. I'm going to let that tie into it. Because <laughs> when I do it, I'm going to go and talk some stuff about it, talk about us, right? So, like I said, he that loves not does not know God, for God is love. And you even got people to sit there and want to debate that, you know. Hey, you don't love everybody. Oh, well, you don't love everybody. That's the point. <laughs> and don't forget, always, we want to try to do in this platform is to, to, like Nehemiah 8, so they read in the book and the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. As we go through this, even to the Lord's Prayer, let's go to an understanding of the scriptures. So one of the things is, as we talk about it, is the fact is that in Matthew 6, starting verse 9, after this man therefore pray ye, meaning you don't have to pray this way verbatim, but he said this manner uh, is how you pray. He said, after this man therefore pray, our Father which art in heaven. See, when you are praying, the Lord's Prayer. You are talking about the fact is that you are calling God your Father and you are saying that you are a child of God. This is what you are saying. This is what, this is who you are praying to. And then that's a good thing to sit there and recognize your Father in heaven, not your Father in your flesh, not your Father in your particular country, or your particular state, or your particular party, but you're talking and praying to your Father in heaven, meaning that you've given him honor, respect. And hallowed be thy name, meaning that I am exalting you, Father above my political party affiliation, above the color of my skin, above my nation that I'm born in, both the state I'm born in or the family I'm born in, I am giving you and honoring you and praising you above all those things. Yeah, I'm gonna talk some things as I go through these scriptures. And that kingdom come. He said, he didn't say that uh, the, the uh, political parties come. He didn't say the color of your skin come. He didn't say racism come. 
He didn't say uh, nationalism come. He ain't talking about those things. He's talking about his kingdom, his system, his way of behavior. And don't forget his system, his way of behavior was talking about the fact that Christ came for the ungodly. That he came to give life and life more abundantly. His kingdom. His kingdom is that he wants all men to be saved. His kingdom. His kingdom, which says to love one another. Christ said in John 13, 34, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. His commandment. It says, it's marvel not, you must be born again. His kingdom, it said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. His kingdom, sit there and say that we're all made in the image of God and that God is king. His kingdom, when you say that kingdom come, he doesn't talk about a kingdom that has hate toward your fellow man just because they're different. He doesn't have a kingdom that talks and looks at the rich man and said that the rich man is the only one that has favor in God. He didn't say that a, a person of color has the favor of God only. He didn't say a person that's called himself white that has the favor of God only. His kingdom is for all men to love and get along with one another and treat each other as brothers, not as Cain did with his brother Abel, but as Abel did with his brother and with the relationship he had with God. His kingdom, his kingdom does not deal with lynching and kingdom, killing people, breaking into somebody's house as a police officer and shooting somebody in three seconds while they just trying to wake up and see who's even in the house. Wow. Look at this. Thy will be done. His will is not. You know that, right? You do know that. When you pray the Lord's Prayer, do you know His will or do you talk about your will? You know, we're talking about the fact that we're talking about the political environment that's going on today. Do you think his will is for a person to be a slave? Do you think it's his will for a poor person to stop to death? Do you think it's his will to try to make college education so expensive that people don't go? Do you think it's his will to sit there and help people to go and do things such as murder somebody, shame somebody, kick people out of the church, our church ministries? When he say he came to save the ungodly, he came to save the ungodly. And you, you turn that into as like, no, I don't want the ungodly in my ministry. You, his will, what is his will? His will of all men to be saved. What is your will? Even Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane said, never let that thy will be done. Are you saying that? Or are you saying, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I, I don't like people because of the color of the skin. I don't like people because of how much money they don't have. <laughs> I don't like people because they came from another country. I don't like people because they have a different different way of thinking. And, and I'm going to ain't be angry with them. I don't want them to integrate into my school. I don't want, you see what I'm saying this? You, what is his will? Because a lot of cases we say the will of man. And you know what Christ told uh, Peter when Peter said there and, and tried to rebuke him because of what he said. Christ said, I'm going to be crucified and I'm going to rise again. Peter going to say, nope, that ain't going to happen. And Christ looked at him and said, get behind me, Satan, for you are mindful of the things of man instead of the my, my things of God. How many of you, how many of you have the will of God in your mind? Or do you have the will of your political party, the will of your flesh, will of your family, will of, I, I mean, what, what, what will do you have? And which will do you think matters? Well, I'm gonna tell you something, if you want eternal life, you do his will. 
if you want eternal life. Now, if you don't want to do eternal life, then you don't do his will. He's right. This thy will be done in earth. If you don't want his will done in earth, you want to do your will, you want to do your political party's will, you want to do the color of your skin's will. I don't know, whatever you think you will is you think you're doing. Well, you want to sit there and make sure people don't we don't will we work. I don't like these immigrants and all that other stuff. If you want to do that, that is your will. Just understand his will. If you're gonna do, just like Christ said, nevertheless, thy will be done. If you don't know his will, you read the word of God for yourself. But the point is, if you don't know his will, or you wanna do your will, or you wanna do the group mentality will of hate and, and disfran disfranchisement and everything else you call it. If you wanna do that will, then you're not doing his will. And if you're not doing his will, you're not going into heaven eternal life and you can deceive yourself you can sit there and say well i don't care that's fine because you need to understand when you do receive judgment you know that you made that choice because christ said to do his will and we're going to talk about when the scripture said not everybody come to the lord says lord lord have i not that we're entered to the kingdom of heaven he said for those who do the will of the father that's all that is very critical for you Stop lying and deceiving yourself and thinking that you can sit there and find reason to hate somebody and still say you have eternal life. And then to teach your children the same thing. Why would you teach your children to have eternal death? Because if you're not teaching him to do God's will, and if you're not looking at the word of God, and you know, you can get together behind closed doors and talk about the will of the flesh. And said, we deceiving them, boy, because, you know, we really ain't going to do the God's will. Because that's what you need to understand. It's not about people. It's about his will being done in your life. Thy will be done in earth as it were in heaven. So do you believe if you take about hate and, and anger and all those things that you are good to go? If you're going to do the opposite of his will, do you really do believe that you are going to heaven? You think that you can do opposite of what God's will is and still go to heaven? Talk to your pastor and ask the question. Ask him directly. Ask him directly. Let me come on this for a second. Because y'all y'all tripping. Some of y'all are just tripping. Some of y'all just going to a great trip. How do you expect? Ask your pastor pastor, the minister, ask him, be, 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 don't let him lie to you, just don't be straight to us, that's a pastor, can I get to heaven doing our will opposed to God's will? Can I get to heaven doing our will, our goal, our manifesto? and our perception of who we're supposed to be, our pride and, and all, all what is, I don't care what, like I said, black or white or whatever. And you sit there and say, oh, I want to do this, as long as I do our will, can I still get to heaven? Ask, ask the question. Say, so Father, ask the pastor, ask the priest, can I get to heaven? doing opposite of his will and if his will is to love to forgive to save the ungodly but my will is to oppress the ungodly hurt the ungodly put them in jail <laughs> mass incarcerations and all those other things and, 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 and just discriminations and everything else. Can I get to heaven doing my flesh will opposed to God's will? Every last one of us should ask that question. Do I get to heaven? Do I get eternal life doing opposite of the will of God for all mankind? Did Christ come only to save people with a particular color of skin? You know, the answer is no. Ask your pastor that. Did he 
say, does he care even about those immigrants that's coming from South America to, to this country, try to come into this country? Did can, is it okay for me to hate those people? Is it okay for me to oppress those people? Is it okay for me to, to let those people suffer? Is it okay? That's all. That's ask the question. Because you know, one of the scriptures that I think many of you have seen anywhere to sit there and say, uh, when God was thanking some of those people who visited the people that were sick and visited the people that were in prison, and you know, they did those things to those who are in need. And he said, thank you. And they said, well, Lord, when will we do that? He said, when you do the least, when you do this for the least of these, you're doing that to me. That, that's, what they, that's what his will is saying. But if your will is to uh, the least of these, I don't give a darn about it. Let them, let them, let them, let them rot in jail. Let them, let them starve to death. Let, let them get sick and die. Is it, is that, that's your will? And do you want your will to equal eternal life? No, I'm gonna tell you something. You do the opposite of God's will, you are talking about eternal death. And you can have the mentality all you want, but if you're not doing his will, that's what we do in Lord's Prayer, right? His will, his kingdom. You trying to do something the opposite of that? I can tell you right now, unless you do the will of the Father, unless you practice and have the intent to do the will of the Father, but if you have allowed our political affiliations and all our little pride and, and, and all that other stuff to do the opposite of his will. You can sit there and hate people all you want. You still have eternal death because you decide to do that. You decide when Christ did then say, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you, did you also love one another? When he said in 35, John 14, that was John 13, uh, 34, 35 says, the world would know you are my disciple for the love you have for one another. So I guess if, the, if you sit there and say that it's okay to, to let people stop, you sit there and say it's okay to, to uh, oppress people, uh, take their rights and, 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 and uh, take their rights away from them exploitation, colonization, and all those other things. You think that's that's his will. To continue to sit there and say, I, I want my interest is for me instead of his interest. His will. Well, let me just tell you something. You have the right, because he gave you that right. You have the right to go against the will of God. But you also know that you have a path destined for those who seek and practice to go against the will of God. If, if you want eternal life, do it his will. Do it his way. John 14, 6 said, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to follow but by me. So do you want to do, do you want to go his way or your way? Do you want to do his will or do you want to do your will or your political party's will or whatever, whatever you think is the will of, of the policies and the platforms. What will are you going to do? <laughs> That's important for you. That's the decision you have to make because there is a point in time for every last one of us to die and, and we sit there and try to try to impose and put and keep other people out because we don't want to go in ourselves. I'm telling you that I want to go in. I want eternal life. I'd rather do his will instead of do your will. I'd rather do his will instead of my will. Because our wills, our way of thinking, our carnal mind of thinking equals eternal death. And the Bible tells you that. So you got to ask yourself, as we do, use this platform to say, whose will do you want to do? Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day. Yesterday is gone. Yes, you made mistakes. I made mistakes. Let's sit there and focus on today. Because yesterday is gone. Tomorrow is not promised. Sufficient today is even thereof. His will. Give us this day our daily bread, which is once again the word of God. The word of God is the will of God. And if you're doing things that hurt people, you're doing things to oppress people, you're doing things that hate people, you're doing things that, that, that will cause harm to somebody else for selfish reasons, 
you can sit there all day long but the bottom line is if you don't get his daily bread if you don't do his will you go you go ahead just just will go ahead and plan your future get your house in order because you have put yourself in the eternal death you chose during this lifetime you chose to do things that equals death and forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debt to us see you don't some of you don't want to forgive nobody you don't want to forgive somebody because of the color of the skin you don't forgive somebody because they're immigrant you don't forgive somebody because they're white you don't forgive somebody because they're black and yet you want to be forgiven the same measure you meet others the same measure be met to you that's what that scripture is basically saying forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debt towards that means that if i don't forgive my debt towards that now i don't want to be forgiven either read the scriptures and stop playing church and stop being the church you got to stop being the church he said and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. I mean, don't, don't be led into temptation that you can't pass the test. And God, I'm thinking some good thing about God is He does not lead you in temptations that you can't pass. But when you sit there and I look at I'm looking at the civil rights movement, I was looking at the, the, the integration school integration, and I saw those people out there with posters and signs and, and they saw the anger in their faces while somebody's trying to go to school. And because of the difference, they were being rejected by grown people, teaching their young children to do the same. Whose will are you doing when you do that? I know you make it feel good to be accepted. You go to the school boards and you sit there and you get angry and you, you talk about critical race theory and all that other stuff. And you, you sit there and say, I'm angry and mean and nasty who are you reflecting who are you forgiving who become do, when you become the evil when you use the tools of the evil one to hate to kill the main and everything else do you think that you are in in, in route to heaven <laughs> i mean don't forget the main goal is heaven he came to give life and life abundantly here, but he just said there saying the scriptures is that that will be done in earth as in heaven. Yet you're gonna sit there and use the devil tools? You're gonna sit there and be like the devil itself. And you sit there and say, I'm doing his will. God said that will be done in earth as in heaven. So you don't want to be the evil. You don't be the one we're gonna be asking to be delivered from. And you can't be asked to be delivered from yourself. Must not be, right? He said, for thine is the kingdom. Once again, he said, my way, not your way. My way is uh, my way or the highway. And then highway to, remember that song, the no highway to hell. <laughs> ah, how many people have chose the highway? They sit there and said, I'm ready. How many people want to go the highway to hell? Because <laughs> he said, thine is the kingdom my kingdom, his kingdom. But many of us want to go our way. Many of us want to try our way of doing something. Mitch Christ said, there's only one way, right? He only says one way. Just like it's one God, one law, one Lord, one baptism, one way. <laughs> How many of you want to do his way? How many have chosen to do their way? Huh? Got to it, it, sit there and think that you're doing something. Why you hating somebody? And you ooh, you hate somebody because you don't like what they look like. You hate somebody because you don't like what they own or jealous of somebody. Oh, saints. Well, excuse me, ain'ts. Don't you want to be a saint? And you want to do a saint, you got to do his will. That's for me. That's for you. I choose to do his will. I'm trying to say, no, do I perfect? But see, my point is to do 
operating on the grace and mercy of God, but going his way. So when I sit there and try to press people, I'm not going his way. I'm going my way. And yet I've sat there and I see the, the grace is not covering you going that way, except for to keep you from being killed between the time that you made the decision to go of the opposite way. But the whole purpose of the grace is for going his way. And the grace is to go do it his will. If you sit there and try to do his will, his kingdom, operate in his kingdom, then, then, you, then you go into an eternal life. But if you want to do it, your way. If you want to do it, be selfish. You know you're being selfish. When you sit there and even teach your children to hate somebody because, because of their differences. You can sit all you want. I mean, you've seen the hate and the anger and the passion that people have and you sit there and put yourself in agreement with them. You're sitting there saying, I'm putting myself in agreement with death. Because if you're not going to do it his way, his will, you're doing it, then you're doing you're doing your death. Man. Christ said, I'm the way. I'm going to say it again. Jesus, I'm the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to follow but by me. Which way are you going? Maybe I'll make a subject of that. Which way are you going? <laughs> Which way do you want to go? You can't sit there and say you want to go to heaven and then act like evil and mean and nasty. You can't sit there and say that. So, once again, I was in verse. Uh, where it says 13 thy kingdom come for thine is the kingdom anyway that's uh verse 13 said for thine is the kingdom meaning his kingdom not your kingdom not your believe manifest destiny destiny from the devil gave you that's the destiny he gives you not the destiny god gave you don't sit there and think that god gave you the destiny to be a liar to be a hater to be a murderer that is not god's way that's not God's destiny for you. His will is for you and for me. What we try to do, we want to get all up in the flesh and so then say, I have a right, I have the destiny, I am superior. You're superior in the flesh and therefore you're killing yourself. Good Lord help you. He said, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, meaning his glory, not our glory. A lot of people sit there and got vain glory, trying to sit there and try to get things that fit their pattern. Good Lord, forever, amen. So the problem is you want to do this way? You want to do his will or you want to do your will? You want to sit there and, and, and you, you either choose death or you choose life. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.